Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my November TBR list. Unfortunately, spooky season has come to an end, but that definitely does not keep me from adding more witchy books to my November list. I absolutely love fall and I will continue to read spooky books for as long as I want to because October is just not nearly long enough to fit in all of the amazing good reads. So I definitely have a few more fall books I want to get to before diving into all those holiday romances. And I also really, really, really would love to dive back into some more fantasy books so I am very much looking forward to my November TBR. I also have some dark academia mystery thrillers that I've been very much in the mood for and of course there's also the Gilmore-a-thon or the Gilmore Girls Readathon happening in November which is the highlight honestly of my month and I cannot wait to share with you guys what I'm gonna be reading. So let's just go ahead and talk about my Gilmore Girls TBR because this is definitely subject to change but I also need some help because I cannot choose what I want to read for some of the prompts. I do know I am going to be combining a few. The first prompt is to read a book set in a small town and I decided to choose Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. This book has been so hyped and if you go on Goodreads it's so highly rated. This has been on some people's favorites list of the year and I need to know what in the world it's about. All I know is that it's set in a small town in South Carolina, which sounds familiar, but it says an enchanting tale of lost souls, lonely strangers, secrets that shape us, and how the right flock can guide you home. I do know this is about our main character named Zoe who goes to this town, and I believe her mother just passed away, so I don't know if she's trying to like uncover secrets from her mom's past or what in the world is going to happen in this book, but I do know there are stories that some ghosts tell, so it sounds like magical real and it also sounds like a found family possibly. Definitely a cast of quirky characters that I'm very much looking forward to meeting. I also decided to use this one for the prompt of family drama because considering her mom passed away and there are also neighbors that were connected to her mother and there are sisters in this book, I just feel like there's possibly family drama. I'm just saying that it counts because I don't think I can get through like seven books or six books even in one week. So I am just going to use this as the prompt for that. If you have read this book and there's definitely no family drama, please let me know and I will try to find another book to fit that prompt. The next prompt is to read a book set in fall or winter and I decided to choose Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. As you can tell, I'm definitely back in that fantasy mood and this book and other birds are actually right around 300 pages, which is pretty short for a fantasy fantasy book, so I think these will be okay to get through for a readathon, hopefully. I'm actually avoiding all types of reviews for this book. I did not super care for Fable, and I think that's the only book I read by Adrienne Young, so I'm a little bit hesitant, but I do know this is her first adult book. It says a deeply atmospheric story about ancestral magic and unsolved murder and a second chance at true love. This just sounds perfect. Like honestly, it sounds like it has so many elements weaved into the story. I haven't even read the synopsis of this. I think I may have read it a while ago before it first came out. I do not want to read it again. I want to go into this blind. And my friend Elizabeth said she thinks it's probably her favorite book this year. And I think she even said a new favorite of all time. So I am very excited for this one, but I'm also like super scared because I want to love it just as much as everyone else. The next prompt is to read a book with complicated love interests. While I think this only may have one love interest, I'm definitely counting Laura Olympus as complicated because if you guys have read the first volume of this or if you know anything about the story, it's definitely complicated. So this is the second volume. I have been dying to get to this for so long now. I love the story. It's just a cute like romantic time and 
I am so excited to dive back into the story, but I do know that for readathons, I've got to have some type of graphic novel or manga to get me through and give me like a good mental break. So I decided to pick up the second volume for that reason. The next prompt is to read a book that has Asian representation or is written by an Asian author. And I have two choices for this one. I cannot decide which one I want to read, so I need your help. The first one is Arsenic and Adobo. The second one is a cozy mystery called Death by Dumpling. As you can tell, these are both very similar. This one I think has to do with a girl that's helping her aunt, I think, with a restaurant. And there's a food critic that's like out to get the restaurant and he shows up dead. And so our main character is accused of killing him. And this one is similar where she moves back to her home, small town. She helps her mother, I believe, run this noodle company or noodle restaurant. And one of the restaurant's property manager has a deathly allergy to shellfish. And so he accidentally ends up getting killed. And so the restaurant is accused. So these are very similar. I cannot decide which one I want to pick up, so I need you guys to tell me in the comments which one you liked more. The next prompt we have is to read a book with leaves on the cover. This could be any type of leaf. It could be like a spring leaf or a fall leaf. I also have two choices for this one because I cannot decide, but they're both cozy mysteries, of course. The first one is A Dark and Stormy Murder, and then I also have Murder in the Mystery Suite. This one has to do with our main character who gets to be the assistant of I think one of her favorite suspense novel writers and so she gets to live at the estate and she starts making friends with all the people in this small town but then one day there's a dead body that shows up on the estate's lawn. I don't know where we go from here but I love a good murder mystery and this one piqued my interest because these guests show up to the resort to play a fantasy role-playing game. Hello, yes please. There is also a scavenger hunt involved. It just sounds so good, like right up my alley. These are both the first in a series and I cannot decide which one I want to start first. If you guys have read either of these or you liked one more than the other, please let me know because I cannot decide. The last prompt we have for this is to bake a fall treat and watch a favorite episode and I'm not sure which one I'm gonna watch yet. We may even do a little bit of a Netflix watch party. So let me know if you guys are gonna be joining in on this read -a it's honestly my favorite I have ever done and who doesn't love Gilmore Girls? So if you missed out on the details, this is a readathon that's going to be happening November 7th through the 13th so you still have time and I wanted to share my TBR so you guys could get kind of some ideas sparked maybe or give you guys some suggestions. But then I also wanted to mention our group buddy read which is as seen on TV. Why we picked this book is because it says adorable and steamy fun that's full of Gilmore Girls vibes. It also takes place at Pleasant Hollow. There is a romance. There's even a main character and her last name is Geller. This just sounded like the perfect fit for this readathon. I've never heard about this author before but I'm really hoping that everyone loves it including myself. I'm also going to be a special guest on Jan Agaton's book club for November called the Full Moon Book Club in case you guys have never heard of it. I will leave her link to to her channel below but we're actually going to be reading Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. This is a very short fantasy book and I'm going to just read you guys the synopsis because I don't even remember really what this one is about so I'm going to read it to you guys but I do really love T. Kingfisher's writing. After years of seeing her sisters suffer at the hands of an abusive prince, Mara, the shy convent-raised third-born daughter, has finally realized that no one is coming to their rescue. No one except for Mara herself. Seeking help Help from a powerful grave witch, Mara is offered the tools to kill a prince if she can complete three impossible tasks. But as is the way in tales of princes, witches, and daughters, the impossible is only the beginning. On her quest, Mara is joined by the grave witch, a reluctant fairy godmother, a strapping former knight, and a chicken possessed by a demon. <laughs> Together, the five of them intend to be the hand that closes around the throat of the prince and frees Mara's family and their kingdom from its tyrannous ruler at 
last. So this just sounds like a very quirky cast of characters, obviously, but also just a really good fun time. So I hope you guys will join us. And we will be having the book club discussion over on her channel on November 9th in the evening. So I will leave all those details down below if you guys have read this book and want to hop on and discuss with us or if you guys want to join us. The next book that I cannot wait to get my hands on that I think comes out mid-November? I can't remember when exactly, but it is called Legends and Lattes. I have seen this book everywhere and everyone that has read it has loved it and has described it as kind of like a cozy fantasy read and I personally have never read anything like cozy fantasy, but I know we do have our main character that's an orc that runs like the first coffee shop that this town has ever seen. I've pretty much stayed away from reading the synopsis of this book because I do not need to know anything more in order for me to pick up this book. It just sounds like a really cute fun time and yeah you guys will have to let me know if you guys are planning to pick this up when it finally releases physically. Another book that is releasing very very soon is A Wilderness of Stars by Shay Earnshaw. You guys, I cannot be more excited to get another Shay Earnshaw book because I absolutely fell in love with her atmosphere and her writing earlier this year and I just can't get enough. I think A History of Wild Places was the first book I read this year and I was like, wow, where has this author been my whole life? Because her writing is immaculate and this is another one of those books that I have strayed away from reading the synopsis. The only thing I know is this has to do with our main character that is a teenage girl and she's an astronomer. I do know there is more paranormal and possibly witchy vibes. This is a little bit higher on the fantasy spectrum for what I remember, but that's pretty much it. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a huge fan of this cover in particular, but I don't even care. I'm gonna be at Barnes & Noble the day this releases, hopefully reading it, binge reading it over Thanksgiving break and I just could not be more excited for this. Next I have When the Crow's Away by Orly Wallace, I think is how you pronounce her name. In case you guys did not see my cozy reading vlog, In the Company of Witches, which is the first in this series, is the first cozy mystery I have ever read and I gave it five stars. It may possibly be one of my favorite books I read this year, so I have very high expectations for the second one in this installment, but it is a paranormal bed and breakfast mystery. Because cozy mysteries I believe don't leave off on a cliffhanger, I am just very excited to see what mystery is going to be in this one, if there's going to be a death of a character we already know. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm also super excited just because I love this world so much and I love these quirky characters. I knew immediately I had to add this to my November TBR. And because it doesn't look like I'm going to get to this book by the end of October, I decided to add The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches to my November TBR because this doesn't seem very spooky. It just seems like a comfort witchy read that I feel like I could read at any time or any point during the fall and everyone has loved this so I have to read it by the end of the year. I feel like I've talked about this so much on my channel but I haven't read it yet and I just know that our main character is a real witch. She's pretending to be one online but then people find out she is a real one and she ends up going to this school to train other witches and she ends up possibly falling in love. I'm not sure what else could be in this book. I am just very excited because I know there's a found family trope in this and what more could I want? So I am very excited to finally dive into this. And getting into some more fantasy books is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I have heard nothing but amazing things about this and I heard it is like Bridgerton but with Faye. So of course that means I'm going to pick it up. I was obsessed with Bridgerton earlier this year and I just need more of those vibes in my life. If this writing has anything to do with like the whole aesthetic of the Bridgerton show or has anything remotely close to that, I just know I'm going to fall in love with this and I think this series is complete now. I think there's four books, at least three. So I am very, very, very excited to get into this one. And what I love about it is this is only 270 pages. So you have a very short fantasy book, which I love, and I just have a feeling I'm gonna be binging this. So if you like Faye from Sarah J Mass or Bridgerton like I do, then I highly recommend checking this one out and hopefully I love it. Another book that I have been eyeing on my shelf 
for literally months. I think this came out last October and I don't know why in the world it's taken me so long to read it. That is Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I loved Sorcery of Thorns so much and I was so eager to pick this up and honestly my excitement for it still hasn't died down yet because this one sounds even creepier which I think is going to be great for this time of year. All I know about this one is that our main character speaks to the dead and she helps their souls pass on to the next world and I don't really know anything else about it. I don't really want to. I feel like I keep saying that for a lot of these books but I feel like a lot of times when I go into books blind that does really help me kind of just tune out everyone else's review and feelings on it because I love this author. I know I'm gonna love the book and I don't want to hear anything negative about it. So I am very excited to hopefully be able to prioritize this one. I honestly think I may even pick it up like in January if I don't get to read it this month because I'm seriously that excited about it. And I also saw that she's coming out with like a second Sorcery of Thorns or like a companion novel and so I really just want to read that after I read this and I just I love Margaret Rogerson so it's time. I could not let another TBR or another month go by without finally reading Demon in the Wood by Lee Bardugo. I am so stoked for this. For some reason I thought this was a story that she'd already written somewhere and they just turned it into a graphic novel but apparently not. Apparently this is the Darkling's origin story which I love. I love that she chose to put this in graphic novel form because you guys know I love graphic novels so I'm definitely going to be prioritizing this this month. I know the Grisha verse isn't for everyone but personally I love it. Leigh Bardugo really got me back into reading after years of being in school and not being able to read. I am just very excited this is finally in my hands. Hopefully this will be one of the first that I read in November. I have been in a big mood to read more mystery thrillers lately and not just that but dark academia mystery thrillers and the first one I'm going to hopefully be able to read is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. I bought this at a library sale for super cheap and have wanted to keep it for this time of year because the vibes are going to be perfect and I've seen really great things about this. I didn't enjoy her other book that I read but the writing was absolutely amazing and I think this one just has to do with a professor that's possibly a murderer? I have no idea. It sounds like an unreliable narrator situation which I am totally here for and I feel like mystery thrillers are also perfect to go into completely blind. I am hoping to read this one and hopefully I love it. I'm hoping to love it a little bit more than my lovely wife so we will see if that's true. Last but not least is The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. This is one of the very few books of hers I have not read yet and she's typically a hit or miss for me but I feel like the creepy vibes of this mansion estate is just gonna be so good for like a rainy day. I don't know much about this but I do know the grandmother to our main character passed away and I think she's left some type of inheritance. I really don't know what I'm getting into for this one but I do know my friend Lauren actually really likes this one and I have a feeling because of the atmosphere or the setting where this takes place I'm really gonna enjoy this more than maybe some of her other books so I really hope that's the case but again I'm just going into this one blind. I got it super cheap at a thrift store and we'll see what happens. All right friends there you have my forever long TBR list for November. I feel like October is always super packed for reading but then all of the overflow books you didn't read in October tend to flow into November and I end up with an even bigger TBR than I did in October which I feel like is definitely going to happen this month but that is okay because we have Thanksgiving break and the holidays and just so much more time for reading at least for myself so I'm hoping to knock out quite a bit of these books. I hope you guys are going to join us for the Gilmore Girls Readathon as well. That is really going to be the highlight of my month. I think that is it. Thank you so 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 much for watching. Go ahead and leave me a candle emoji in the comments if you would if you watched this whole thing just to represent some of the dark academia books I'm going to be reading. Thank you so much once again for watching. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video.